<laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, this is gonna be very much a vibes show. I mean, as opposed to what? Fucking Darwin Nunes. <clears throat> I'll sell it myself. Liverpool 2, Newcastle 1. I, I'm sure like you, if you're a Liverpool fan, went from total frustration to unbridled joy in just the space of a few minutes. I like I was genuinely watching the match thinking like I don't even like football anymore. <laughs> I was like, this is shy. VAR is shy. The referee is shy. Liverpool are shy. It's all shy. Cut to a few minutes later, like I fucking love football. I love Nunes. I love Liverpool. I love VAR. I know, let's not be silly. So we get the bad stuff out of the way first. And I wish I didn't have to start a lot of videos with that. But uh, when we had 11 men, our defence was shaky as fuck. Oh my God. Just so error prone. Bad decision making. They just looked like a newly assembled defence. I don't understand how they can... They're the most experienced of playing with each other defence in the entire league. How is this possible? I don't I don't get it. Trent is looking quite liable again at right back, I have to say. Um I mean, I thought I thought cutting his hair was the answer. I thought, well, that's that, we're winning the league. Uh, but it turns out there's more to it than just cutting your hair and you need to actually uh, play better. And <laughs> I'm just so fucking kidding. Trent is looking now that Trent is kind of back in his back in his prison at right back like where he just wants to soar free in the middle of the field but he's not playing to his strengths anymore he's playing to his weaknesses Trent in that first half got absolutely mugged by Gordon oh first of all he he gets booked for throwing the ball which is st stupid like Gordon milled into the back of him where's his yellow then he uh, gets done for pace has to pull him back you know, you've seen that being given many times as yellow. He may have been quite lucky to get away with that. Then he lets the ball go under his feet. Just very simple error. Tries to grab him again. Like he'd have got a definite red then if Gordon had have actually stopped or went down or whatever. Gordon, probably luckily for him, Gordon burst past him. Um, and it's a decent finish, to be fair, the prick. I was like, <laughs> I was just like, not him. <laughs> a Martin scoring off me. Oh, that is it. I seen I seen Gomez warming up. I seen Gomez. It, it, am I wrong? It looked like Gomez was warming up before Van Dyke's red. Because I don't know. I don't know about you, but I thought Trent's definitely getting a red here. He's gonna lose his head. Then Van Dyke loses his head. Just a little bit rash. Um, the red was harsh. I'll say that. It was a foul, I think, and I think the red was harsh. So that was a mad couple of minutes where I'm like, oh my god, this game. I was like straight away. I was just like, well. I mean, that is the game, really. Like, we can hang on, keep it respectable, but, like, I don't see a way into this. And I didn't see a way into this for long spells of the game. That's the bad stuff out of the way. Now let's get to the good stuff. Um, fucking yes, man. Right, so here's here's five things I like from the game. Number one's got to be Darwin Nunes. Oh, my God. I mean, I was, I was thinking afterwards, like, well, that's him as a nailed-on number nine. You better start in the next game. But then I'm like, well, did he actually just do exactly what Klopp wanted him to do and make a huge impact off the bench? Um, I would love to see him starting, though. I think he's going to have an unbelievable season if he gets if he gets a run of starting games. I don't think he finishes those last year. I think last year he would take an extra touch or he'd be a little bit unsure. But the big Achilles heel for him has always been his, you know, keeping his composure, keeping his head. And uh, he looked like he knew exactly what he was going to do, like, seconds before before hitting it. The way, like, he, he looked like he had his mind made up. The equalising goal, he knew exactly where he was putting it. <laughs> so I also loved, I don't know if anyone else picked up on this, the little squeal <laughs> of joy as he was celebrating past the microphone. <laughs> Darwin, go! Darwin, go! Darwin, go! Darwin, go! Darwin, go! And the second, the way he just lets it, the way he lets it just kind of roll past him, um, and absolutely clinical, fucking brilliant. Um, 
and just him of all people I was like fucking yes man and I was I was I swear I was I before the game I was like even when we had 11 men I was I was uh I was saying look if we can if we can get a draw at St James's that's a good result and then to go on and win it oh my god I was losing my shit things I like number two Jason fucking Tindall man what what are you doing absolutely desperate to be center of attention this guy is so desperate to be the center of attention that the Premier League literally had to come up with a rule specifically for him to tell him to fucking sit down only one person can stand at the front of the technical area and coach during the match only one other person is allowed to stand Jason but they must remain close to the technical area seating all other occupants must remain seated Oh, fucking yes. And then clock with the one back. Come on, like, he couldn't script it. Number three, the timing and the weight of the pass from Salah is a thing of beauty. And uh, it, 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 it has been acknowledged, but I think just to, just to give a bit more focus on it, the way he not only, first of all, the weight of the pass, it's absolutely perfect, slices through right in between two defenders. Um, but the timing, the 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 time that he chooses to release the pass was absolutely perfect. Wrong footed, one of them. Just absolute, you could, a striker couldn't ask for a better pass than that. Uh, and considering Mo had been fairly, you know, out of the game for most of it, to even be still switched on in the 93rd minute. I mean, no one wants to win more than Mo. Maybe Sabasalai. <laughs> Number four, the save from Allison to keep us in it. Allison is just, I mean, when you look at what other keepers are doing, now granted Allison had a wobbly start last week, <clears throat> but when you look at like Ramsdale, I know he did well, or Onana, and we have the best keeper in the world, and we do, he's the best keeper in the world. That The power behind that shot was something else. For him to be able to tip it up onto the post and then knock it away it's as good as a goal Trent <laughs> number five Trent celebrating a throw in you know I've seen a clip during the week of you know they were doing that like um, heads and volleys volley volleyball they were doing that thing in training and him and Robbo beat Mo and and Sabaslai and Trent's like yeah! <laughs> And I was thinking, like, I don't recall him celebrating goals with that much, like, vigour. And, uh, but I've seen it again. This one wasn't a goal. It was a throw-in. And I just loved the passion. That just some, he just, he, it's just bursting out of him. He, he can't, he, he can't bottle it. He can't contain it. Just, we got this little advantage for a throw-in right at their goal. Yes. Unbelievable. So an absolutely unbelievable result. And far be it for me to talk about actual football things. But I think the key for me here now is if we beat Aston Villa next week. So often have we had some huge, like, big feel-good result um, and then we kind of squander it because then we've got real momentum. Shame the fucking international break comes the week after. Anyway, this puts us in a really good spot. If you'd have told me seven points out of nine when we play, when we're away to Chelsea and Newcastle first three games, I'd have said, yes, please. What team are you talking about? Oh, us? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll definitely take it, yeah. I'm buzzing. Do you ever get those, like, you, like <laughs> I was just walking around me, me house last night where you just kind of want to just randomly just go, <laughs> <laughs> you know? I was like, I was saying, I, I was chatting to, to my girlfriend afterwards and, you know, she doesn't follow it at all. She'll humour me and I'm like, can I just talk at you for 30 seconds about what just happened? And she's like, yeah, go on, yeah. And to be fair, she even gives me the whole, oh, very good. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, even, and I was talking to her, <laughs> my voice was shaky. And she's like, you're shaking. I was like, well, I'm, just, I'm just so excited. <laughs> During the match, she, she'd see me all stressed. She'd be like, why do you even watch football? Like, if this is what it does to you. You know, whereas, like, I'm, I'm not listening. I'm just like, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, but by the end, I'm like, that's why. That's why I like football. 
fucking come on and I, it's like nothing else like she I remember when we first started going out like 20 years ago uh when we were teenagers and she would at the start be a little bit like offended at how much emotion I would give to football you could you, you could give me like the best news I've ever received something that I really wanted to happen not football related just something else a result an exam result or something that I was worried about you know something and my reaction you know I'd be happy and my reaction would be oh brilliant oh that's good you know but nothing gives me the like Only football does that. Nothing nothing gives me that release of just that makes me jump around my sitting room, you know, to the point where my eight year old tells me, Dad, sit down <laughs> And I will not sit down. Um anyway, that's me. What a fucking result. God I love Liverpool and I love all of you up the reds. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>